Hello. This is a video summary of our article entitled CAV 1.2, CAV 3.x channels mediate divergent vasomotor responses in human cerebral arteries that was published in the May issue 2015 of the Journal of General Physiology. This is Usama Harra speaking. A given vascular network, like the cerebral circulation, comprises arteries, veins, and capillaries. An arterial wall is made up of two main layers, the endothelium from the luminal side and the smooth muscle layer that circumferentially surround the vessel. The building unit of the latter is the arterial smooth muscle cell, whose contractile status is determined primarily by the entry of calcium ions to the cytoplasm. In particular, a vasoactive stimulus, such as an increase in intraluminal pressure, can elicit smooth muscle depolarization and subsequent activation of calcium channels. A rise in cytosolic calcium concentration follows and leads to arterial constriction. The identity of calcium channels involved in this cascade has been recently revised with the identification of T-type calcium channel subtypes, in addition to the well-established rule for the L-type CAV1.2 channels. This emerging evidence has relied primarily on experimental work conducted on rodent arterial smooth muscle. Little is known about the expression and function of specific CAV subtypes in human arteries. In this study, we use human brain tissues from resection surgeries. Cerebral arteries were isolated and subsequently frozen to be used for expression analysis or acutely used for pressurized myography to assess reactivity to intraluminal pressure. Alternatively, cerebral arteries were enzymatically digested to isolate arterial smooth muscle cells. These cells were used for patch clamp electrophysiology or frozen for PCR analysis. Further, arterial networks of excised brain tissues were analyzed and incorporated in a computational model to predict blood flow. Starting with myography, we first noted that freshly isolated human arteries constricted to incremental increases in intraluminal pressure. This response, that is known as the myogenic response, relied on extracellular calcium as calcium-free physiological saline solution reverses arterial constriction to passive vasodilation. Quantitative PCR analysis on whole arteries and isolated cells showed that messenger RNA of L-type CAV1.2 as well as T-type CAV3.2 and CAV3.3 was enriched in the smooth muscle layer. Next, Western blotting confirmed the expression of these three subtypes at the protein level in human cerebral arteries. Patch clamp electrophysiology using freshly isolated human smooth muscle cells and physiological concentrations of calcium identified an inward current. Calcium current was modest in amplitude and displayed two components, suggestive of low and high voltage activated calcium channels. The use of barium as the charge carrier augmented the current amplitude and rendered the current no more divisible into two components. Representative traces illustrate amplitude augmentation in the same human smooth muscle cell. Summary data show that charge carrier replacement was associated with not only amplitude augmentation but also a depolarizing shift of threshold and peak voltages. Given that human arterial smooth muscle cells express three voltage-gated calcium channels, total inward current represents an ensemble of the three components. In order to separate the L and T-type currents, we used the L-type blocker nifedipine and the T-type blocker NNC550396. Application of nifedipine partially inhibited barium current and the subsequent application of the NNC compound abolished the residual current. Plotting normalized nifedipine and NNC-sensitive currents reveal differential voltage dependence, a finding consistent with high and low voltage-activated calcium channel profiles. Along the same line, 
activation and steady state inactivation displayed profound hyperpolarized shift subsequent to the addition of nifedipine. Kinetic analysis showed that nifedipine insensitive T type current inactivated faster as compared to the L type component. This data, in addition to other lines of evidence presented in our study, support the successful separation of the L and T type calcium channel conductances in human cerebral arteries. We next sought to assess the relative contribution of the L and T type conductances to tone development in human cerebral arteries. In myogenically active human arteries, L-type calcium channel suppression using nifedipine profoundly dilated arteries. Subsequent T-type channel inhibition elicited modest vasodilation. Vasomotor responses to nifedipine and NNC550396 displayed divergent dependence on intraluminal pressure. The L-type component followed a sigmoidal pattern that reached a maximum at high pressure values. In comparison, the T-type component displayed a Gaussian pattern and peaked at pressure values between 40 and 60 mm of mercury. Calculation of percentage contribution to maximal tone unraveled a dynamic contribution of both conductances to the development of myogenic tone in a pressure and voltage-dependent manner. As denoted earlier, the T-type current represents influx through both CAV3.2 and CAV3.3 channel pores. To separate both currents, we employ the divalent cation nickel at a concentration that should selectively inhibit CAV3.2 channel. Application of 50 micromolar nickel partially suppressed T-type current in human cerebral arterial smooth muscle. Subsequent kinetic analysis of subtracted T-type currents, sensitive or insensitive to nickel, confirmed the successful separation of a T-type current predominated by CAV3.2 channels. In particular, nickel-sensitive current exhibited faster activation and inactivation profiles as compared to insensitive component. Moving to whole human arteries, nickel augmented myogenic constriction especially at lower to medium intraluminal pressure values. This finding was similar to recent findings in rat cerebral arteries, where we identified a functional correlation between CAV3.2 and the large conductance calcium-activated potassium BK channels. Thus, we assess this postulation in human arterial smooth muscle cells using perforated patch gland electrophysiology to monitor BK-mediated spontaneous transient outward currents, or stocks. As expected, CAV3.2 inhibition using nickel suppressed BK current frequency. These findings collectively suggest that CAV3.2 channel plays a key role in feedback control of arterial tone through downstream modulation of BK channel activity. Myography experiments showed that calcium channel subtypes elicited divergent vasomotor effects in human cerebral arteries, particularly CAV1.2 and CAV3.3 augmented, but CAV3.2 counterbalanced myogenic constriction. To conceptually ascertain how each channel subtype could influence cerebral blood flow, a computational model was developed. Intraluminal pressure within this model was variable, and the pressure diameter relationship measured in isolated human vessels under different conditions was integrated. This integration enabled the calculation of steady state distribution of pressure, diameter, and blood flow for each arterial segment. Color-coded virtual networks indicated that the suppression of CAV1.2 and to a lesser extent CAV3.3 enhanced network blood flow in a pressure and diameter dependent manner. In contrast, CAV3.2 inhibition constricted arterial segments and decreased cerebral blood flow. In conclusion, this study explored voltage-gated calcium channel expression and function in human cerebral arteries. Our data indicate that the L-type CAV1.2 channel predominates as a crucial calcium influx pathway 
that mediates vasoconstriction. On the other hand, CAV 3.2 subtype mediates paradoxical vasodilatory response by downstream modulation of BK channel. Based on recent work on rodents, this modulation is expected to involve intermediary generation of calcium sparks. In comparison, the CAV 3.3 channel modestly contributes to calcium influx leading to vasoconstriction. While this study is the first to report three different calcium channel subtypes in human cerebral arteries, it is worth noting that tissues were collected from patients undergoing surgical procedures. Whether the underlying pathologies can alter calcium channel expression and function remains to be tested. Our data suggests that CAV 3.2 channel modulates downstream BK channel activity. Future investigations are warranted to explore the localization patterns of both channels and whether ryanodine receptors play an intermediary role. Finally, we thank Drs. Bjorn Hald, Christoph Altier, and Michael Walsh for critical comments on the preliminary figures. This work was supported by the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, CIHR, and the Alberta Innovates Health Solutions. Thank you very much for listening.